let me show you something pretty cool. You know how we made that table with, you know, the local tag and did I kill that? Here it is. We did the local tag and then um, these are the outgoing tags. Um, let me show you something real cool. And this won't work in all networks, uh, depending on how you've got security and how the network's set up. But in our little GNS3 uh, lab here, we can do a ping via MPLS. So let me just go through the uh, help here for you real quick. Now you can ping, and it's one of the protocols. You can send an MPLS echo. So let's see what we have to do here. Pseudo wire. That's um, something we won't go in today, but we're doing an IPv4. We're just doing a basic frame MPLS here. And we're going to go ahead and do 4.4.4 slash 32. This is where, you, you know, here we're doing the slash directly after the IP address with the uh, bits, whereas in those other two commands we had to put a space in 32. So Cisco is uh, consistently inconsistent, as you'll find. But um, let's go ahead. I think that's all we really need. And there's a lot of other um, uh, options you can do, and, and we'll, we will um, look at this in another uh, video as well. But let's see what this does. Okay. So we send a ping MPLS IPv4 to the loopback zero interface on R4. I didn't want to ping. I'm sorry. I went through all that and it wasn't, yay, it pings, big fucking deal. Here's what I wanted to do. And I do a control A to go to the front of this command. Rather than ping, <clears throat> I need a trace route. And it's the same commands, much like, you know, your normal trace route. It'll be the same thing as the ping here. And uh, there we go. This is what I wanted to do. So we traced out to it. And what's cool about this is you see the hop. So this is our local hop. Um, you see the MTU, which is kind of cool. And then you see the labels. So we see as it leaves this hop, it's got label 18, which jives with what we had found out earlier, just through our looking through the LFIBs goes to router 2. That's the ingress interface on router 2. Um, label 18. Yeah, it's showing the ingress. But anyways, goes to router 3. I mean, uh, label 2, router 2, same thing. You know, swap 18 for 18. Boring. And then this is where it gets cool. This is router 3, and it is going to implicit null. It says a label on router 3 for this is uh, an implicit null. And these EXP here, just real quick, these are experimental bits, that's QoS. You can actually, with this command, do some cool stuff is that you can force these bits um, to a certain value, but again, that's gonna be something that uh, is covered in a different video. And then you just do the normal um, IP lookup on R4. So if we just take this and um, and compare it with our handmade deal that we did earlier. You can see outgoing 18, 18, 18, 18. Pop, which is your implicit null, implicit null, and there's no tags involved here. So that's pretty cool. And that's, you know, something that's kind of neat to have. Again, depending on how the network is set up, you might not be able to use that. Okay, so that's PHP in a nutshell. Um, what I want to do now is I did promise you that I would show you that that, um, that LDP advertisement from R4, that implicit null, actually is an MPLS label with a value of 3. And in order to do that, we're going to have to go ahead and get a packet capture. Okay, so we're back in GNS3 here. And this is probably my absolute favorite um, feature of uh, GNS3. Now a lot of people are like, oh, why use GNS3? You're just adding additional overhead, you know, to get some pretty pictures for your simple ass networks, anyways. But this is actually very cool. If you um, go to a link like this link here, eh, it looks like this guy is going to be. Okay, come on now, don't make a fool out of me. Ah, 
there we go, 0, 0, 2 on R4 to 0, 0, 1 on R3. What you can do is you go on that link, right click it, and you have a capture button here. And what that's going to do, when we click this, it's going to, you know, choose a source, blah, 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 blah. This will be set up earlier as far as um, it comes by default pointing. If you have Wireshark on your on your um, computer, it will def you, it will have a default to uh, start Wireshark as your packet capture. I believe I don't think I'm talking out of my ass on this because I don't think I did anything special for this. But um, anywho, um, go ahead, hit OK, and that is going to bring up Wireshark. And you can see Wireshark here. I haven't expanded the uh, recording screen to catch all of that because we're not going to spend much time in it right now. Uh, we're actually going to pop back into the CLI. Okay, so we're back in the CLI. Let's go on over to R4 here. And I'll clear the screen just to make this a little bit cl cl clearer. Anywho, what we want to do is we want to generate a packet that's going to uh, send that uh, implicit null to R3 and what we can do to do that is we can clear the LDP neighbors and that is command to do that is clear MPLS LDP neighbor and if you're used to OSPF or um, OSPF is actually process I'm sorry BGP this won't be that foreign to you so in this case we only have one neighbor uh, so we're just going to use an asterisk if you have multiple neighbors and you want to clear it for only one, then you can certainly specify the uh, neighbor. But let's go ahead and do that. Clear that. And if I got my login, okay. So you can see that it uh, clears the neighbor, brings it down, and in a few seconds here it's back up again. So I'm actually going to pause real quick. All right. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to pop back into GNS3 here and just go ahead and right click again and stop the capture. Capture stopped. And now we will bring up Wireshark.